saying, we're actually fed up. We're actually tired of the exactly the same thing again and again and again. And we see it because some of you may not know this. I know all of you, you comics were so good. You weren't funny, but you were good. <laughs> and, and you said that we should vote. And that's right, correct, we should be voting. 60 to 70% of us actually don't vote. Most of us don't know that, but it's true. Most people don't vote. The idea that you actually you know, decided to register to vote is amazing, thank you. That's really a, a great thing. My pleasure. Yes, it's great, thank you. And that's what you'll hear often. You'll hear often people will say things like, I'm a registered Democrat and now I'm voting for you. I'm a registered Republican and I'm voting for you. I'm an independent, I'm voting for you. Um, I never voted before and I'm voting for you. You hear this often with this movement. This is special. This movement is special. And people wonder why. Why? Is it because I'm so handsome? <laughs> well, probably, yeah, but no. Um, no, what it is, is it's, it's a very important thing. It's because I'm human. And it may sound silly, but it's true. I try very hard to just be human, which is why I do things like go on podcasts. It's why I do things like do a comedy show. It's why I do things like just show up. If you've watched me show up over this past year, and I, and I did cross all 62 counties, if you watch me do that, if you've seen any of the live streams, a couple things you'll notice. Number one, never in over a year have I ever brought one note. Never. Even in the beginning, I just walked up and talked. You've seen me at debates. I've done two debates. No notes. I just talked to the debate. Didn't do any notes either. No notes. And the second thing I do at all my events, no rules. People yell out, people say things, people insult me, whatever, it doesn't matter. Even when that happens, I take, I take any question, any comment. And what you'll hear me say after every question, every single time, I'll say the same thing at the end of every question. Who's heard it before? What do I say? Did I answer your question? The one thing I never want you to think is did I dodge a question? All politicians do is dodge questions or attack or get angry. That's all they do. They don't just answer questions. They don't actually give you an answer. If you look right now at what His Majesty King Andrew II is actually talking about, <laughs> what, what, what is his entire campaign? His entire campaign is Trump's a bad guy. Entire campaign. That's it. Doesn't help anybody. No one's better off because of that. No one's improved. The, the Metro North isn't better, <laughs> right? Nothing happens because of that. Subway doesn't get better, not because of that. Nothing, nothing gets better because of that. And what's the Republicans saying? Cuomo's corrupt. We didn't know that? <laughs> that's, that's a news flash to us, right? Nobody cares. It doesn't help anybody. No one gets better because of it. No one's kid gets better education. The sad part is I'm looking for something that's really simple. Happiness. I talk about it often. I talk about the idea that this country was built on the idea of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. But no one talks about happiness or the pursuit of happiness. No one even talks about it. They just yell at each other. So what they do is they yell at each other. It's not about happiness. I talk about happiness. Why? Because happy New Yorkers means you stay in New York. It is that simple. It's not rocket science. It's a normal thing. If you're happy in a certain place, you stay. Imagine if you could imagine a happy New Yorkers to where, imagine this was the norm. You grew up in New York. You have a job in New York. You raise your family in New York. You have kids in New York. Your kids get educated in New York. They find a good job in New York. You then have a good job, you retire from that job, you get a pension, and you stay in New York, and you spend that pension in New York. In fact, you like it so much that you start a small business in your town in New York. Can you imagine how this state would be if that was the norm? Be amazing. But what is the norm? You struggle in New York. You struggle to have a family in New York. Your kids struggle in school in New York, in a two-tiered system that if you can afford tutors, they do well, and if you can't afford tutors, they do poor. Not just that, when they graduate, if they graduate, they go to a school, they get a degree that has no value, there's no opportunity for them, they struggle for two or three more years, the struggle continues, and they either go into the trades and decide to build houses, or they leave New York State. 
because there's an opportunity here. Meanwhile, you struggle and you stay in New York for one or two reasons. One, because you have an elderly parent, because you don't want to leave your parent. Or two, because you had a job that's going to get you a pension. So you stay and you struggle, like, like the previous comedian, right? My, 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 my mom is going to stay until she retires, right? Yes, exactly. That, I, I wish that wasn't true, but that is. And then either your parent dies or you get your, you get your pension, then you leave New York State. Over 100,000 New Yorkers leave New York State every single year. Over a million since His Majesty has taken the throne. Over a million. I'm a business guy. What does that mean? I care about happy customers, right? If you run a business or I've been with the business, you've got a lot of things you deal with. But at the end of the day, you've got to make sure you have happy customers. If you have happy customers, your business grows. If you don't, your business fails. I want to be the governor who says you are my customers. And if you are happy, you will stay. And if you stay, I will have a better state. We can't survive losing over 100,000 people every year. We simply can't. We can't, this state can't survive. And ask a Democrat what their answer is. Democrat will say, we need funding. You hear that word all the time. What will the Republicans say? Invest. We need investment. Yes, we do. What do those two words mean? Taxes. Yes, they do. Lots of your taxes. Extortion, extortion. Never, say again? Extortion, extortion, extortion. That's, yes, yes, right? The, I don't know if you have the MTA, the recent thing that, that His Majesty said. His Majesty said, it takes we need $30 billion. We need $30 billion. We ain't, we ain't gonna get it from nowhere. We need $30 billion. That's what it'll take to fix the MTA, $30 billion. $30 billion is one third of the budget of New York City. One third of the budget of New York City. One third. So, we're gonna, for, so for every tax dollar you pay, one third goes to fix an MTA system? Is that what we're talking about? Has anyone heard any, any idea at all? No. You might say, Larry, this sounds good, but, but, but there's no way you can actually win. You can't win, it's impossible. Here's the reality. I'm the only guy doing anything that's not the norm. The only guy. Why do they not have plans? Because in every time you see them, how do you see them? Quick news quips. Have you seen that right? Yeah. And I have an actual answer. It happened to me just now. I was just at a, another event where they asked me a question like, how do you fix the MTA? You got one minute. What? <laughs> one minute to fix the MTA? It took 40 years to break it. <laughs> what are you talking about? So if you notice what I do often, you see me doing long podcasts. You see me doing long form again and again and again. I did Glenn Beck for an hour and a half. I did uh, Dave, um, Dave Rubin for over an hour, right? I did, uh, I did Dave Smith for over an hour. I did Joe Rogan for, an hour, for over two hours. Long form, why? If you have actual ideas, you can have an actual conversation. People can hear what you have to say and that's the way of the world. How many of you have listened to one of my podcasts? Yeah, yeah. They keep telling us we need quick sound bites. We need quick 30 second sound bites. No, we're tired of that. That's what's gotten us here. We actually want to hear somebody who has something to say. So I'm the one doing the podcast. I'm the one doing all the cool things that no one else is doing. You know, back in 2008, Obama was doing email when nobody was doing email. That was a big deal 10 years ago, right? Now everyone does it. Big deal. And everyone thought no way he could beat, you know, Hillary Clinton. She was, you know, the one who could beat everybody. No one could beat Hillary Clinton. And Obama beat Hillary Clinton in, in the primaries. Remember that? 2008? Those of you guys are old enough to remember that? Right? Some of you aren't. Most of you are. Yes. Yes. And that was a big deal. Surprise. And now here comes 2016. And Trump is tweeting. Trump can't beat Hillary. Trump can't beat Hillary. He got beat again by technology. Why does Hillary keep losing? Because she's establishment. She's establishment. That's the common denominator. What's common between Obama and Trump? Anti-establishment. What's common between Ocasio-Cortez? Anti-establishment. What's, well, who am I? Anti-establishment. <laughs> Anti-establishment. <laughs> nobody saw, back in 2008, nobody saw Obama coming. 2016, nobody saw Trump coming. Nobody saw Ocasio-Cortez coming. They don't see me coming either, but the result will be the same. The result will be the same. This is a winnable race, you see it already. You see people coming around, you see all your friends talking, you see signs popping up, 
You see people being, being concerned and worried, and it's the best part. I now have conspiracy theory attacks. Yes. <laughs> now I know I'm winning. Now I know I'm winning. Oh, it's Cuomo great. Plant. I'm the Cuomo plant. Oh, so good. So good. God is so good. And here's the best part about that. Is, is their attacks on me is their only answer. All they know is mudslinging. All they know is attack, attack, attack. You would think they'd say, well, don't vote for Larry Sharp because my guy is so amazing. And let me show you how awesome my guy is. They don't say that because their guy's not amazing. Or they just attack me. But they don't realize when they attack me, they're validating me. That's the validation right there. They're not attacking the other third party candidates. They're only attacking me because they're not going to win. They're afraid of me. So they attack me. Awesome. And if you follow my social media, what do I do whenever I get attacked? I laugh and put it on my page. <laughs> I take the attack. Oh, I'm this evil guy. Great. Here it is. Look at I'm the evil guy now. Yay. <laughs> and I've been doing that for a year. And you would think they would learn and stop. But they don't. They keep doing it. And it's amazing. I'm, they're giving me content. <laughs> they're giving me content and doing something else. They're actually showing the people who support me that we're real. And I can say it. I remember this is years ago. I, I saw a TV show. It was like a, an Oprah show or something like that. And one of the, the guests had on somebody who was a scam artist. And a scam artist was talking about how he scams people, right? I do this and I say that. And then they go fall for the scam. And someone said, why are you on TV telling us about the scam? It's a scam. You, you're going to blow it. Now everyone's going to know it's the scam. And then he goes, oh, no, it doesn't matter. People don't know any better. They're going to keep falling for it. It doesn't matter. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what he said. And I thought, wow. Huh, I wonder if he's right. No, it's happening to me. I'm telling them every time you attack me, it makes me stronger. And they go, no, this attack will work. And they keep attacking and I keep getting stronger. They don't, they, they don't know anything else. All they know is muscle. <laughs> so whenever they sling mud, I say bring it on. Because the advantage of this campaign was some people aren't seeing. This, as an individual campaign, is actually the most important campaign in the entire nation as an individual campaign. Wow. And why do I say that? Because think about this. What happens when I win this thing? Think how it changes the entire country. No other single event and a single election in this, in this country can make that change. This one. If I win this thing, when I actually, on November 7th, they go, holy crap, Larry Sharp's the governor. When that happens, every single third party in this country goes, oh my God, we can win. Yeah. Oh my God, we can win. Obviously, I'm a libertarian, and I want my party to do great. Of course I do, 100%. But other third parties have value too. Right? They have value too. And when I win this thing, they all just became valid. People who are like, I'm tired of the R's and the D's, but they're the only way to win, will go, they're not the only way to win. I can join another party. I can do something different. I don't have to do the mudslinging. I can go do something else. It will change the entire nation. But something else will happen. All the negative, horrible, horrible back and forth mudslinging you see, the vitriol, the nastiness, will by default go away because it doesn't work as well anymore. Because if it's just me and you, and I go, yeah, I know I killed two people, but he killed like four. <laughs> so he's way worse than me, right? When we do that, well, she's available as a third party. Now as we call each other murderers, people vote for you. This doesn't work, so it'll stop because it won't work anymore. And what'll have to happen? We'll have to actually have ideas. It will change. But even more important than that, just say I only come in second. Still be amazing, but just come in second. What happens then? All of a sudden we will find better Democrats and better Republicans in this entire country because now there's a referee. Now there's a referee. And they'll go, oh my God, we don't have our lap dogs anymore. Oh my God, the system is broken. We can't just be bad guys. We have to actually have actual policies and stand by the principles that our parties were supposed to be. And many people who are voting for me are unhappy Republicans or unhappy Democrats. That's common. Well, guess what? I hope you stay libertarian, but some of you won't. Some of you will go back to the other party. They get it. It's okay. But here's what I hope I do. By running this campaign, 
when you go back to your party, you'll have a better party because we'll have to react to this campaign. And that's the one thing I've already seen. This campaign has already changed New York. Many of you have seen it. You see people who are actually excited about voting, are talking about policy, are fighting me on some of my ideas, which I'm happy to fight on my ideas. At least you're fighting on some actual ideas, right? Maybe you can make them better. We're talking about getting better. We're talking about the state getting better, not just packing up and leaving. And a lot of people are saying, you're hearing it. I'm waiting to see if Larry wins. I'm waiting to see how well Larry does. You've heard it. I heard it too. And the best part of this whole thing is, even if I only come in second, there'll be a microphone in my face every single day saying, Larry Shop, how'd you do it? And I'll talk about all the things I'm talking to you about. I'll keep going. And the message keeps going and we'll still have change. And when that happens, it won't just be New York State. It'll be New Jersey. It'll be, it'll be Connecticut. It'll be all around. This here is the beginning of real change and you all feel it. It's the beginning of something new. <laughs> you were that thirsty. You're like, you're like, couldn't have waited like 30 seconds. I was like totally on a roll. I was totally on my way out. It was all good. And you were like, all right. I wanted to give you a gotcha. All right. Closer. I see. Do I have to restart now? <laughs> Hi, I'm Larry Shop. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> In reality, what we can do here, if we take the time to let our people know, let people know this is a real campaign, show them the enthusiasm, we can make real change. And I mean that seriously. We did a poll about three weeks ago. And at three weeks ago, I was at 13% with about 33% name recognition. Now, what does that mean? That means if we get to 100% name recognition times three, some of you guys did not have common core, so you'll know this. So 33% times three is, is, is about 100, right? 13 times three is 39. 39% is a win. 30% is a win. 30% can be a win. Not 39, so I don't even need 100% name recognition. I need 85, 90% name recognition. Tell people who I am. Let them know what I'm doing. Put out a sign. Wear a cool t-shirt. All good. <laughs> Let people know who I am and they're going to try to figure out, say, who's this Larry Sharp guy? And when they do that, they'll look us up. If they look us up, they'll see what we're doing. If they see what we're doing, they'll like it. And they'll say, you know what? Maybe I should vote for this guy instead. Because if they vote for me, here's what I promise you. One or two things will happen. One, I'll win. And if I win, the change will begin right away throughout this entire nation, it will begin. And you guys will be on the ground floor and I'll still need you. I'll still need you. People say, well, Larry, you just talk to people. Because I still need you. I don't have massive party infrastructure, right? I don't have all the big guys. I got that, I don't have, you know, my, my largest, my, my average donation is 85 bucks. That's my average donation. I don't have big guys and writing big checks. That's not who I have. I have you. Literally, I've said this before, I'm gonna sell one of the helicopters that His Majesty has, he has many of them. I'm gonna sell one and buy a bus and, and actually deck the bus out in a way that allows us to run the government out of the bus. I'm gonna call it Road Force One. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that I can still drive around the state and be connected to people so that I know what's going on and how you feel. Two days ago, I was at an event in Bayside. And at the end of the event, the guy says, Larry, do you, where are you heading? I said, I'm heading to Astoria. He said, you had Astoria? I said, yeah. He said, uh, oh, you were there. You were there. He, said, he was there at the time, yep. And the guy said, uh, uh, you want me to give you a ride? I said, sure. He said, wow, he couldn't believe that I let him give me a ride. Give me a ride. I said, well, why not? He goes, well, you know, I'm just some guy. I said, you're a New Yorker. Why wouldn't I want to spend time talking to you, right? I'm a business guy. I want to talk to my customers, right? Common sense. Yeah. I can't make my customer happy if I don't know what my customer wants. So some guy gives me the opportunity to talk to him. I said, sure, I gotta go back anyway. I can hang out with the Uber driver or I can hang out with him, right? People see I do events and diners often. I let people know where I'm gonna eat. Literally, I say, here's where I'm going to be eating. I'm gonna eat anyway. And people literally show up. <laughs> this is true, Zach's there all the time. He knows. Literally, I, I stop, I say, I'm gonna be eating at a certain diner. Here's where I'm gonna be. And people show up. Sometimes it's three people, 
Sometimes it's 15 or 20 people. It doesn't matter. I show up so I can talk to them. This is how I cross the country. This is how I know what to say. This is how when you ask me questions, I can say, no, no, this is what's actually happening in New York. One thing I'm sure you've noticed, the thing that I talk about often and people are surprised about, they say, Larry, you talk about what's actually happening in New York State. Yeah, I know because you've told me. That's how I know because I listened and because you told me. And that's how I know so I'll keep listening so I can keep making things happen. Because in the, at the end of the day, the most important thing is me being governor who does his absolute best to facilitate each one of you trying to pursue your own happiness your own way. I have to be that guy so that you can pursue your happiness your own way. I don't want to control you. I don't want to be your mother. I don't want to be your father. I want to be your brother. The guy who you really love, you don't want to live with. <laughs> but you really love him. And when you need that ride to the airport, I'm there. That's who I want to be. So I w yes. If you, want a, if you want that type of governor, if you want that type of person in a leadership position in this state, and I hope that this will be something that others follow and copy, and you will get this in legislators, and you will get this in mayors, and you will get this in all politicians, you will begin to get this as the norm. Someone who you can talk to, someone who's approachable, someone who doesn't want to control you, someone who wants to allow you to be free and to find happiness and just defend your rights against a local bully. This should become the norm. We will change New York, we will change the nation, but most importantly, we'll make a better New York State. We'll make a happier New York State. We'll make a new New York State. That's what I want. So I'm, I'm gonna leave you with something here if I could. I need your help. I need your help in two important ways. Number one, you have to keep talking about this campaign in every way, shape, or form you can. Yeah. We have 10 days left. Yes, you have to. And if you see me, I'm not stopping. I did four events today. Four today. Yeah. Yes. I will do again four tomorrow. And I will do four again on Wednesday. I'm sorry, no, four again on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm doing one event, trick or treating. I'm sorry, two events, trick or treating. <laughs> Thursday, I'm going up to debate. So I'll be prepping to debate on Thursday. That's where we'll be going. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Friday, three events. Saturday and Sunday, two rallies. Monday before, five events. I am going to finish this thing sprinting. This is a marathon. When you get home, you also make videos. And I gotta make more videos, yes. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing this for 15 months now, I believe. 15 months straight of me campaigning. It's been a marathon. And I'm gonna do what Marine Corps taught me. When you're done running, at the end, you need to have an empty tank. I'm gonna finish this thing sprinting. That's how I'm crossing the finish line in a full sprint. I need you doing it too. You can't give up on me. You have to keep going and you gotta sprint with me. Never have I asked you to do anything that I haven't done. Never have I asked you to do something that I wouldn't do. Never. I lead by example and I model the behavior that I want. I'm sprinting. Sprint with me. Don't stop. I need you to push all the way through till the last day, all the way. That means telling your friends, wearing your shirt, putting up your sign, sharing stuff on Facebook, uh, going on YouTube, putting comments on stuff. That means all that stuff. Twitter, that means all those things. Don't stop. Share, share, share. Second, keep donating. I'm doing it. I've given over 12,000 of my own dollars to this campaign. I'm my third biggest donor. So I've given my time and I've given my money. So I'm asking for your time and for your money. If I, I'm not asking for anything I haven't done. I'm asking for the same thing. Whatever you can give. If you're in a position or you know someone who is, who can give $1,000, $2,000, Give it. If you're in a position, some of you aren't, I get it. Some of you are. If you are, give it. But Larry, I can do $2,000 for a lot of different things. Yes, or you could save your state. But Larry, I want to be righteous and keep my money. Great, keep it to buy a U-Haul so you can go to North Carolina. <laughs> or you can put it into the state. Your choice. Now, if you're not in a position, I get it. Not, not everyone can swing it. But if you can, do it. If you can't, 
10 bucks is fine, 20 bucks is fine, or give me more time. If you don't have the money, no worries. Give me more time. I need time and or money from all of you until November 6th. And then please, no matter what, vote. Remember, tell everybody, it's Larry Sharp, and that's Sharp with an E. And the E stands for? Yeah. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You fucking win this thing. Win this thing. Thank you!